as as previously. As previously discussed, quarks always come in groups. For example, if we examine the baryon particle, baryons always consist of three quarks. And if we examine the mesons, the internal structure of the meson consists of a pair, a quark anti quark pair. So we see that quarks always come, with, come in groups. And our inability to actually experiment experimentally isolate, observe and examine an individual quark is known as quark confinement. So quarks are always confined to existing in a group rather than as individual species. Now one way that helps us to visualize quark confinement is by imagining that our quarks are confined to an elastic bag, an elastic bag that can be stretched but to stretch this bag, we actually have to input a great amount of energy, a great amount of work. So let's take a look at diagram A. In diagram A, we have one type of baryon, the proton. So the proton is shown by this outer circle. And we can imagine that the outer boundaries of our proton serve as this elastic bag. And to actually stretch stretch the elastic back to separate the individual quarks, we have to input a certain amount of work into our system, our proton. So basically inside this proton we have three quarks. So we have the up quark which has the color red, we have the other up quark that has the color blue, and we have the down quark which has the color green. And each one of these colors produces a color charge, it gives the quarks color charge, and when the gluons, the fundamental particles that carry the strong force, also known as the color force, when and they exchange the gluons that basically holds our quarks together within our proton. Now, let's actually suppose we try to separate our quarks from one another. Let's say we want to separate this blue up quark from these other two quarks. So we try to actually input a certain amount of energy. We try to do work on our system to separate our quarks. So it actually turns out that a tremendous amount of energy of work must be done to actually overcome those strong nuclear forces, those color forces that hold our quarks together. Now it turns out that when we actually input that tremendous amount of energy, the amount of energy that we input to actually separate and stretch our elastic bag ends up exceeding the amount of energy that that is needed to actually form new mesons and baryons via the process of pair production. So remember, pair production is basically using energy to transform energy via Einstein's mass energy equivalence principle, converting energy into mass. So recall that we can actually use energy and if we have a great amount of energy, we can readily transform that energy into forming new mass, new particles. And it turns out, when we input this great amount of energy, we input, amount of, we input an amount of energy that exceeds the amount of energy needed to produce new mesons, the quark anti quark pairs, via pair production. And this means, instead of actually separating our quarks, we end up producing more mesons and more baryons, so we produce more hadrons. So this method of visualizing quark confinement is commonly known as the bag model for quark confinement. 
So, one other concept, idea that I want to discuss in this lecture briefly is known as asymptotic freedom of our quarks. So, based on experimental evidence and experimental results, we see that as the quarks actually get very, very, very close to one another, so when they get close enough to form our proton, we see that the color force or the strong nuclear force that exists between these quarks actually ends up decreasing and they can actually now move uh, with a great amount of freedom around the space of the proton and this idea that as the quarks get extremely close to one another the force decreases between those quarks is known as the asymptotic freedom of those quarks. Now of course as the quarks begin moving away that force begins to increase once again. So this idea of our quarks being able to actually move within this confined region of the proton with a great amount of freedom in their motion is known as asymptotic freedom and it is a result of the fact that as they get close that color force that strong force that holds those quarks together begins to decrease and that allows these quarks to move away now of course to move around of course when we separate them this force increases and they want to snap back together to form back our proton so when we try to stretch the bag the like the color force the strong force begins to increase and so we see that a great amount of energy must be inputted to actually separate the quarks and because the energy is so high when we try to input that energy, we simply end up creating more mesons and more baryons as shown in this diagram. So these are our two examples of mesons that could be created for this particular case.